Hey guys, welcome to our The Boys Season 2 uh, premiere review. This is going to cover episodes 1 through 3. Four. And now 4. Oh yeah, yeah. 1 through 4. <laughs> is we got a brand new episode coming out here soon on Thursday. Uh, but we did want to cover the premiere. Obviously, back in Season 1, we freaking loved the yes, show. Absolutely. This is an must example watch. of a must-watch show on Amazon. They don't have very many, but they got some. This is one of them. I just love the way they're depicting superheroes in this kind of dark and gritty way, realistic way. Like, what would happen if all these superheroes were freaking assholes and, you know, they now need to be spanked by right? like the butcher. And then we've got our, you know, our, our badass team, fucking Judge Dredd, you know, Carl Urban trying to take him out. And then you've got his canary, uh, this this character here who's good and he just wants to do right. And uh, and we have to figure out how uh, this world is going to, you know, cope with all these heroes. But the standout thing is obviously Homelander. That's that's why I watch this He's show. He's a perfect asshole. That's why I'm wearing this. I know it's not exactly Homelander. Homelander, yeah. but it's a little bit, you know, better than a little. Anyways, he's a psychopath, and uh, he's just very fascinating to watch, and that's what makes this show. So let's uh, dive into season two. But first, I want to give a huge thanks to uh, our sponsors for a product that I think is really cool. It's a gadget, and you don't even have to pay for it, and something that you're going to use every day. Check it out. Guys, I wanted to show you this. It is so cool, this tech gadget for gamers. It is the first web browser made specifically for us gamers. Check it out, it's Opera GX. To me, it looks a lot better than this. Here's Chrome's, here's, you know, Opera GX's. And you can customize it. You can change wallpapers. You can even put your desktop here. And check this out, it's called GX control, which shows you exactly what tabs are open, how much resource each of these things are taken, so that you can kill some of the you know browser tabs that are taking up all the resources. Plus, it's got a network limiter, of course, a RAM limiter, and the CPU limiter. This is what I use the most because people come over, and we all know how you know Chrome is a resource hog, and I have like 45 tabs open, and they say, Joe, why do you have so many tabs open? Why don't you close some tabs? I don't want to close the tabs. I want all tabs open. I want all the tabs all the time so this is perfect for me because i never have to close any of those tabs i never have to change my habits and uh there are so many freaking features here for gamers um and if that's not as if that wasn't enough they have built in discord look at this you can integrate your discord right into the sidebar you can integrate twitch so always be informed when your favorite streamers like yours truly is is online. Here's all the people that I follow and who's online right now. So we're talking stuff like forced dark pages and yes, of course, block ads. Look at that. Look at how <laughs> look at it just eliminate. Please don't use the block ads on my channel. You can use it on everyone else or at least support your creators that you like. So there's no reason not to try it out. I mean, it's completely free. They don't ask you to buy anything. Try it out, download it, see if you like it better than Chrome, see if it kind of fits your style, it fits my style. Though you're probably going to want to maybe turn off the browser sounds, it can get a little annoying like the typing sound. Actually, I like the browser sounds, I just turned off the typing. Guys, they're supporting the show, let's support them back by clicking that link down below, downloading it, setting it as your default browser, trying it out a few days. If you don't like it, go back to Chrome, right? Thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. And uh, let's get back to the review. Check it out. So if you're a gamer, if you like, you know, browsing the internet like we all do, <laughs> and you want to try something new and kind of limit your CPU usage, your RAM usage, just have some cool options. Check out Opera. It basically is free, you know? So GX, check it out, guys. All right, so let's get to the review. Um, I'll start with you guys. How did you think that the premiere, first off, Amazon has changed the way they released it. I was about to say that yeah. there's a whole bunch of review bombs for yeah. it. Yeah. Just it was three it was like, stars out yeah. of five when like, really, normally on. the show is like four and a half out of yeah. five when you see it on. So I was like, what's going on here? And I learned that it's because they changed from giving us all eight episodes to we're going to give you three and then we're going to do one a week because they want to string you along. What do you guys think? Uh, I hate that. Yeah, uh, because I wanted to, you know, I want to sit down on a Saturday and watch them all at once. But, me too. Uh, you know, I was actually a little worried going. It's a compromise. 
for but because I mean because the creators want to release it this way. They say we want you guys to discuss it every week. You want it to sink in. We want to build hype around it. You don't there's think there's anything? Shut hype. up! No, there's already major hype. No, I don't need any of that stuff. I don't need time between there. And I like being able to watch them all at once um, because sometimes, like with all shows, sometimes some of the episodes aren't as hard hitting. Yeah, and then I have to wait several days, and then you kind of you're breaking your own momentum, yeah. and like the excitement dies down a little bit. So I prefer the other way. But I'm not going to review bomb it. I'm not going to give it a three out of five, and I still think it's I think it's great. Joe? No, I feel the same way, because uh, like some of the episodes, is like, well, I don't like this character. If it would have been like one, like I have to wait next week to find out yeah. what more about this character, yeah. I was like, oh, I don't know. Well, I definitely wouldn't have liked one a week and oh, premiere yeah. with one. Absolutely not. I think it's an okay compromise. I'm not as mad at it as, as everybody else, because I do like discussing it every week. Makes it easier on us. Actually, makes it harder. Gives us more work. But yeah. I, <laughs> there is something to be said for letting it sink in, discussing each episode as it comes out. Uh, but all right, guys. So let's dive in. So um, there was actually a uh, we got episodes one two three four and uh, a butcher short film and I think I'm the only one that has seen the butcher short film on yes. YouTube it's only five minutes long and it's pointless uh, basically oh, okay. you know he's on the run you know how he's on the run and he's been framed for Stillwell's murder if you don't know Stillwell was kind of in charge of Va uh, Vaught um, and, but Butcher basically seeps help from his old friend Jack. Uh, he, uh, and Jack tries to turn him in. You know, he goes to his house. He's like, can we contact, you know, the old boys and, you know, get this in there. And then, they, and then he wakes up the next morning. He's on the phone. And he's like, oh, shit, he's going to turn me in. So he uh, fucking kills him and <laughs> burns his house uh, down with his body inside. So Butcher's not fucking playing around. Do not fucking... Jesus Christ! And I'm, I guess that's why they took it out of the episode and kind of made it available somewhere else. But I'm like, this can slot really easily yeah. Yeah. in there. And honestly, I felt like there was something missing when Butcher returned. It was like kind of jumpy when he finally mm -hmm. comes back. And it could have been that, that this they just took out. It seemed yeah, pointless. Yeah, because he does have that line. He's like, oh, where'd you get the clothes? Funny story. Then it cuts away. I was like, well, I, I exactly. want to know. Exactly, yeah. I, I want so, I don't I know. the story. Yeah. It's <laughs> not really worth seeing, honestly, oh, okay. but it could have been in the show is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let's go ahead and do the, uh, you know, three, let's start with the first three episodes. What did you guys think of the first three episodes? I think it started exactly kind of where it left off. <laughs> yes. Like, the dialogue was good. <laughs> you know, it's an out there story. And so the the story, you know, there, there's these these drugs and this evil corporation and all these superheroes. But taking that into consideration, it's still a fairly grounded story. Mm -hmm. They don't go off into truly fantastical areas. Yeah. And so it's still, for the most part, a believable story. There's not too many times where I'm going like, man, that doesn't make any sense. It still happens every now and then. But the, it's it's still a, a something that I really, really enjoy watching. I love having the characters back. You know, it, it kind of picks up right where it left off. So I really, it was nice being able to watch all three them all at once yeah uh, i feel the same way but uh the subplot with the deep it's it's got me like yeah. i was like well, what is going yeah. on here there's some is things he, that uh, work and some things that don't and i think some of the subplots do not yeah. work they're not as interesting the huge one that that uh, they keep cutting to is the deep and in this first three episodes there's some kind of religious cult going yeah. on that they're rehabilitating him they've kind of got their claws in him he's like talking to his gills Patton you know Oswald, and yeah. trying pat nozzle on he his voice feels so insecure. Creepy yeah, as hell. He just wants to go like, back to the seven. Like, yeah. What the fuck are we watching, guys? Seriously, yeah. is what I said. Yeah. I don't understand it, but it's apparently it's going go somewhere. somewhere. Yeah. But, you know, he yeah. wants so desperately mm -hmm. to get back to the seven, but he's kind of, you know, being rehabilitated. And th is this going to be some kind of, you oh, know, yeah, so that's got me kind trouble of like in the future? So I'm waiting for that to pay off. But as we're going along, I'm like, hurry up. Yeah. Just get, get to the fucking point. Um, but I think so. Episode one, which is entitled The Big Ride, uh, you know, obviously the boys are fugitives, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, Franchi contacts Butcher again to get him back on there. Uh, and, and But the biggest part of that one that I really enjoyed was the confrontation between Homelander, right? Homelander and um, what's the Sto guy's name? Oh. Uh, shoot. Uh, John Carlo. John Carlo. Stan Edgar. Uh, Edgar. Mr. Edgar. Yeah. Like, this, he, that actor is so perfect. Uh -huh. All he has to do is deliver these lines in the way that he delivers them. 
and you feel so much power behind it. When these two confront each other, I'm like, holy shit. This guy doesn't, uh, does this guy have powers? Is he about to put Homelander in his place? Because Homelander's like, I don't need you. I am Vought, this and that. This guy, I'm the talent. Yeah, I am the talent. But he does not actually, you know, Edgar doesn't need powers to put Homelander in his place. And it's that wonderful fucking acting. Uh, and yeah, from, you can tell. This guy's got some balls yeah. facing up against him. <laughs> Basically puts, uh, you know, Homelander in his place. So, you know, in a, in a believable way. Um, and so you've got Homelander who, uh, you know, is picking up kind of where he left off. Uh, you know, he obviously murdered uh, the previous CEO of uh, Vought, but mm. it looks like he kind of regrets it because he's got this weird milk fetish that goes throughout oh. all of the episodes. Yeah. He's, he's like, got some problems. He finds some breast milk from her office and like, he's like fucking... Issues chugging it down as somebody comes into his office uh homelander's issues his dangerousness it's like a uh i think starlight puts it perfectly is that he's a loaded gun waiting to go off at any moment I mean, yeah. you know I, I feel like he's around the corner he's gonna fucking kill me and uh, we do get a scene like that later on i think in episode three which is like i was like oh fuck they go into an elevator and he confronts her because you know she's been showing that she's like you know being friendly with the uh, the our our character and and she's he's like puts his hand right on her thing it's like oh man he could fucking kill her at any time <laughs> but she she comes up uses her wits and finds a way out of it basically using her conflict with what's the Huey. character's name Huey, Huey to convince him that Huey really did break her heart this is the that's the that's the one contrivance here that forced like conflict. i hate this forced conflict with Huey and uh, and Starlight, where it's like, oh, you didn't tell me you were a prince. I'm, you lied to me. I'm never going to talk I'm to you again. Right now. Quite clearly, you can tell that he was a great guy, and he was doing it. It's, yeah, his you know, intentions are good. So. Mm-hmm. But Why? she's got to be mad at him and all this other stuff. So, anyways. Um, but I think the episodes are really great. They, they got good pacing through the first, you know, one or two. And then I think four, and then three and four kind of slow down a little bit. They give us time to... Uh, you know, get to know our characters more. Um, you know, the guy with a daughter who's building a... M.M., M- uh, right? They M- call him M- 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 I think. M- something, something like that. Yeah. He's building a dollhouse. Like, he gets a lot of development. He gets time to shine in these episodes, mm-hmm. especially in three and four, mm-hmm. uh, where, you know, I'm like, wow, they added a lot of depth to him. And I like it, because yeah. like, I get more uh, background and more character development from him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we love the boys. We want to know more about yes. the boys. This is something that we were asking for season one, and we're getting it. Frenchie's being developed. He just wants to help his relationship with... With Kamiko, uh, and and then and then uh, M's character basically, you know, uh, with his kind of quirks, he's gotten uh, hereditary kind of passed down, you know, quirks and disease that mm-hmm. from his father, like obsessive compulsive kind of stuff. Uh, but he wants to take down Vault, and he's gonna, you know, use all of his means to do so. Um, but how do you think that you know the show is is handling some of the subplots? Um, I mean, like for example, a big one with Butcher and his wife. Yeah, some of it is fairly believable, and most of it's believable. Every now and then, it hints they're trying to go a little bit bigger than they were last season, where things yeah. were a little bit more grounded, and it was pretty much easy to believe everything all the way through. This one, they're they're doing more, and every time, I mean, we see this a lot of time in, in series. The next season, they always try to do up like one up themselves Mm -hmm. and there's danger when you do that because sometimes you know just moving just increasing the stakes just a little bit makes things 10 times more unbelievable and you didn't do very much over here and i think that some of the things with with butcher and his wife just a little unbelievable some of the stuff with with homelander every time that they try to do something a little bit more like storm uh what is it storm Stormfront. Stormfront. Stormfront is, i was going to talk about yeah, it's just another one of those things it's just like there's a lot of little things that i still i'm still wrapped up in there i'm still believing i'm still 100 percent behind the show but there's cracks showing up every now and then i worry that if they continue to get bigger and bigger those cracks are going to blow up into something else yeah i feel like there's like too much going on because we've got the home, the storefront, storefront, stormfront. We got the Vought thing going on. We got the Seven and their drama, and we got the Deep, and then we got uh, what's the other one? Oh God, Starlight, and Starlight Hughes, Hughes and Hughes. there's another one. Like there's there's too mm, the, much. It's like a the club. brother Kamiko terrorists. 
you know, there's a lot around. of stuff going on. Yeah, it's 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 a lot, and the pacing, you know. So it's starting to, you know, it's like shit. Can we put all this stuff together? Yeah. I would rather just kind of focus on a few of them. Um, so yeah, like I said, the big ride episode number one kind of focuses on the power play between Homelander and Vought, uh, and then this is when we get an introduction to our brand new character, Stormfront. Now. I knew a little bit about Stormfront because huh. I did some reading before because I was like, who the heck is this chick? You know, she's got some powers. Is she as powerful as Homelander? This is super interesting. Well, here's the thing. I, I don't know if I should ruin it for, for no, people. No, don't I, ruin it. God damn it. But I need to talk about her and her the way she's depicted in this. Um Okay, Maybe spoil- we'll do, do like a, a spoiler quick right spoiler now? section at the end. <laughs> okay. So we'll okay. Let me just talk to you about what she is right now. Uh, as she is basically a sort of rebel within there. She does her own thing. She doesn't suck up to people. She hates the whole you know. Oh, you're women, girl power, and this. She's like, shut up. We're just heroes, you know. And so this, it's really getting the audience to want to like her character because she's kind of you know telling it like it is and the power to the people and this and that. But you're starting to feel like she has some kind of other agenda there's just some kind of uneasiness to her Mm -hmm. when you first meet her and and as she's talking and you see starlight kind of looking up to her and seeing because this is what starlight wants to do she's sick and tired of being told what to do and wearing all these skimpy outfits and doing all this stupid shit and so she's kind of looking up to her in a certain way and uh, homelander is super fucking annoyed with he hates her this i fucking love this new dynamic if only to challenge homelander on that super powered level as butcher and and the boys can't no. challenge him on that level but i want to know what goes down if these two do not see eye to eye because they do not see eye to eye you know she's over here talking shit about vaude and kind of about the way things are done and he's the leader of the team so he's taking fucking you know uh offense to it and uh i love it because eventually it comes to a confrontation in a later episode and this is one of the best scenes uh you know it's this homelander having this identity crisis uh, you can't, she says, you can't win the country anymore. No one can. You don't need 50 million people to love you, which is what Homelander's whole thing is. You need 5 million people fucking pissed. Uh, the entire concept of a hero who kind of, you know, and unites the whole world. It's a little ridiculous, right? And so she's kind of telling them that. And then it's like, you might have fans, but I have fucking yeah, soldiers. Yeah, I was going to say that mm. point right I there. I love like, that point. I was like, she's kind of right in that sense that you just need to get some people pissed off and that, and you manipulate them in that Which way. Which is true. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Demagogues have done it forever. <laughs> but knowing who she really is and knowing who she's supposed to really be uh is 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 crazy and we do get that in later episodes so we get that uh you know stormfront is revealed uh in in some later episodes that she's racist mm-hmm. and she is basically in uh in the 40s or something like that or, or a, a while ago 60s, I think. 60s, 60s rather uh she was a hero known as liberty and this is revealed and she basically stops an african-american dude driving and his sister was in the back like sleeping and she just fucking murders the guy. You know, she's because just, he's black, yeah. Because, looking for an excuse to stop him. And then, like, you know, so this is kind of bringing some political stuff in here. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's some of the downvotes or something that the episode's getting. But, you know, she's shown to be a racist. And only this one lady knows about it. And she tried to tell people in the, in, in, in the past. But it's like, man, you would, you would think that with heroes, you know, out in the open and and doing these things out in the open that people would know that by now that there'd be more stories <laughs> it's believable that nobody believes her right but it's unbelievable for me when stormfront in episode three has that final battle where she kind of shows off her powers she you know they're they're on the run butcher and all them and she's chasing them down and they have a confrontation in the projects and while she's hunting the boys she does not give a fuck about she's murdering anyone around people around her and they all happen to be African American and she's just like you know they're all screaming because their house is just being blown apart and these people are fighting and exploding and shit and she at one point they don't show it on screen but she gets so annoyed with the screaming she turns around and she's like you know fucking kills them kills everyone 
And then uh, she gets a hold of Kamiko's brother, who is shown to have superpowers. He's like this telekinesis guy. And she's like fucking brutally like rips his hands and just basically starts talking some racist shit to him that he's, you know, because he's just because he's Asian. And she's like fucking like, man, it, it, it was it's brutal, crazy, fucking brutal. Crazy. You fucking hate her character. You're like, she's a piece of shit. And you want to see her get her coming up, up and comings. But she's got that duality because she's saying all the right stuff, but she's doing all this wrong truly wrong horrific shit. And it's funny because Homelander's doing the same. He does this horrific shit, but in public he does the same. And it's like this new hotness and he's old and busted. And honestly, I just want to see Homelander fucking kill her. You know, I just want to see, you <laughs> know, them yeah. fight and see oh, him it's bound to happen. There's so the much tension going on yeah. there. Especially when he's trying to get back to the fix his seven because he, he notices the seven is not the same anymore. Yeah. So he's like, I got to take care of this. He starts getting jealous because uh, Stormfront is like taking over. He's, she's she's everywhere in the she's news. She's on the news. She's. I'm she's, at this point. I'm just in the series just for that. Just for just Homelander for that fight. killing Stormfront. <laughs> and they better uh, get. I, that. Want, I want Black Noir to do more stuff because he's he's yes, let's he's, talk about he's Black Noir. awesome. And but he's also been a little bit of uh, you know comedy relief because mm -hmm. there's these scenes with him where he again he says nothing. And the series starts with him in episode one. Yeah, he's, he's gonna help out terrorists. the boys or something because against once Vod is revealed, like to be like uh, they make babies oh, or whatnot. Right. He you was see crying. him looking at the screen. He's crying. I couldn't tell because so, he's got his mask. No, you can't tell. Is he laughing or no. is he crying? He was crying. Or something. It's like some, there's something going on with him. So I kind of want to know what's going on. I feel you like he's going to be that helping Black him out. Noir will convert because I, I thought so. Homelander's like all of you suck in season one. You remember all of you Except suck in season you. you, Black Noir. You're cool. Yeah, <laughs> because he fucking murders people. Like in the well, beginning, he, he murders everybody, guys. and then he comes to a child. You think he's going to kill the child? But he's no. See, he's got a good heart. It shows you right there he's got a good heart. I he's a real know. hero. That's I the think part so. of him what do you that mean? I like, that he's dangerous and he might <laughs> exactly. still just be a piece of shit and he just doesn't catch nah, up. he's got a heart. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have to see. But he does common sense things. It's like, dude, Butcher is fucking after us. They're obviously against us. So he goes down to, I don't know, level 88 or something where it, there's this lady who's, you know, a tracker. And she's got all these computers, all this information, all this certain yeah. shit. And he's just like, Butcher, find this guy. Then, and she's like, okay, I'll get back to you like tomorrow or in a week. And he's like, he just pulls, pulls up a chair. He pulls up a chair, sits <laughs> <Or> down, <laughs> throws away her almond joy. What's with the almond joy? <laughs> did almond right? joy pay yeah, for all this stuff? Yeah, it's got to be paid, paid. Well, they did say that the almond joy, well, Hughes was like, that's top three shitty candies. Or yeah, but we're talking candy. about almond joy, <laughs> which is like, the, it's a point. Hey, I like almond joy. I exactly. Actually, so I that's what it is. Okay. See? <laughs> God damn it. All right. So, so that subplot really is fascinating with Homelander and Stormfront. I'm in it just for that. I'm also in it for Homefront. Um, here's another subplot. What do you guys think of uh, Homelander's relationship with the sun? So it was revealed at the end of season one. Yeah, he has a son. It is about. his kid. Yeah, He's got superpowers. Uh, it's not Butcher's kid. So what do you think of that? I love this whole dad. He's trying to play dad, but he's yeah. a fucked up psychopath. Yeah, I don't is. understand why the mom is trying to keep him normal. Because like honestly, when he right. gets mad, he's gonna find out. It's yep. like, what is wrong with me, mom? It's like, look, learn to harness your powers. Be a good hero, You're or right, something. Joe. As mm -hmm. opposed to like, no, I'm not gonna tell him. You'd be a good. He's father. gonna fucking. Kick some kid's ass right. and fucking beat like if you murder a kid. Yeah. Hey, you he's need to not even easy. know anything. Oh, learn about his head off. He's gonna stub his toe in the middle of the night and laser the whole house exactly. down. It's like, are you That's kidding? You tell that kid. It's like, no, no, no. You're gonna calm yeah. down. Because you're trying to raise that. him normal. You can't now, keep him a secret. Right, mm -hmm. and and this is I really like this plot line mm -hmm. because we could maybe get Superman. We could get a Superman like character who is he's Homelander, but he's good. Because he's seeing exactly. how Homelander is treating his mother. He's, see, he, he's seeing how injustice. Homelander is kind of a psychopath, <laughs> like asking him to do stuff he doesn't want to do. It was a great scene. They're on the roof, and he's like, just jump, you know? It's time, son. Your and he's like, no, I don't over. want to do it, Daddy. He just, like, knocks his ass off. <laughs> you think the kid's dead. But then, you know, you know he has power, so he's not dead. And then he's, like, arguing with his mom. He's like, shut up, get out of here. And his eyes grow red, and he actually hits Homelander. Homelander is like a fucking steel. Like, you cannot push him but homelander actually falls on the ground but in a way it's what homelander wanted anyway mm -hmm. he wanted to activate his powers he wanted to have his mm -hmm. son kind of feel that that power and 
is he going to be corrupted by it or is he going to be a counter for Homelander in the future? And it's going to be great. I don't think they can actually use it fully to its full potential because it's not a comic book. It's not a, a franchise where, you know, we're going to fast forward 10, mm -hmm. 20 years yeah. to where he's old enough to fight his father. But it is going to be an emotional weakness. Maybe Homelander will finally have a weakness because they thought his weakness was still water or what, what was her still name? Well, yes. Still well. Still well. But that clearly wasn't the case because he yeah. fucking lasered her skull. Yeah. <laughs> Killed. And he regrets so, it. Just some some fantastic plot lines coming in. Uh, let's let's go ahead and, and kind of wrap this up and talk about what works in the series and in season two so far what's not working in season two so far and then what we're most you know looking forward to and how we think where this is going to go in the second half okay um i think what works so far is is still the dialogue i think the dialogue yeah. is still very strong between all of the characters yep. um you know, people people ask all the time because we, we criticize poor dialogue all the time. Well, give me a good give me a good example of good dialogue. And most of the time, when you're watching this, it makes sense what these characters are saying. And for the, I mean, I don't always love their motivations, but the dialogue is always strong. Mm -hmm. Now, the character motivation is actually some of the one of the weaker parts. Where I'm tired of forced conflict. I'm tired of yeah. characters in something having to act stupid because you haven't figured out a way for two, right two characters to be mad at each other. So like, you lied to me. They need a script doctor like they, us. They, they need because you could give a better. Reason. Reason. When the reasons that they give aren't strong. Yeah, and so I think some of the strong enough. Some of the plot lines are working wonderfully. Uh, I think the deep is probably, if I have the to weakest. guess, right now is the weakest. I'm not willing to call it. Bad. bad yet because we don't know where it's going right it's it's the it's wild still card captivating. i was like what is going on yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and, and it kind of interrupts the show in in the episode momentum. four uh there's these things where these women are they're just fucking talking about the like, yeah. turns out he's getting a wife they're right matching show. him up like fucking scientology i think they're trying to draw parallels yeah. with scientology and he wants the chick that wants to do whatever he's like i just love pleasure giving pleasure he's like super like, hot so and he's like <laughs> no she's the one she's the one but no they're gonna go with this creepy lady who's like love love is all you need and, 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 and there were two skeletons embracing each other and that's what real love is yeah <laughs> which is crazy so I'm not willing to say that the deep is you know I think a lot of people are hating on the deep storyline and I think that we just kind of have to see where it goes it could turn out to be terrible yeah. because right now I don't enjoy it yeah. but it has the it potential the to really thing. pay off and so the other thing that's really not working for me is I don't like the spacing out of the show. You talked, we talked at the very beginning. It's like, is the once one or two things a week after three going to be enough? And I think the show is already kind of hurting its own momentum with some of the storylines changing so often mm. that also having to wait a couple days yeah. after a big deep section yep. is gives me a little less excited because it's like, well, are we going to start back up on the deep or are we going to do something else? There were on? once or twice where there was like a small segment, maybe a minute or less. And we were like, what was the point of that? Yeah. Yeah. So we don't know where it's going, but I still I still really like the show, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Yeah, mine is uh, the deep and still the the love interest with uh, Anne and Hugh. Like I thought it was going to go somewhere, but then it's like, no, I'm going to cut it off. I, I actually like, think that yeah. finally paid off. It went somewhere. They 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 have sex. Uh, they like are together. Deuce. They realize that they are working together, but they are just. They cannot be together. So you're right. It is the same storyline yeah, from it's, season it's like, one. But at least there's a small there. payoff there. Um, one thing that I, I think is uh, that doesn't work is, you know, Butcher is forced conflict. Just like you were saying, they force the conflict. And she's like, okay, let's go. She's He's getting her out. He manages to sneak into this compound. Like, where the fuck is this compound? There's no fucking camera. She's like the only one in the compound. And you're telling me Butcher can sneak in, not only sneak in, but have sex with her, just fucking meet with her whenever he wants he Best finds out where it is super quick you would think that you know uh, fucking homelander would have flown him somewhere else and dropped him off to trick him but then he finds instantly where this place is you know because that's where he, you know he goes off from the boys to try to be with her and um you know she's like let's escape and finally when she comes to escape she doesn't bring ryan or the little boy uh you know homelander's son and because she realizes that you know butcher is not going he's he's not gonna be a father to this this son because and butcher kind of reveals himself he's, yeah, like, he's he a super bad suits. freak he you know he now. wants to try to get rid of him and i'm like wow that's some fucked up shit dude. Yeah. like you're you don't know the opportunity you're missing that you could create this you know good a force for good but he wants nothing to do yeah, with and it. Yeah, she has the right point. It's like, look, if we both leave, you're just going to make another Homelander. That's right. all you're doing. 
But yeah. I just don't think that that really fits with his character. Yes, you're right. He, he kind of hates superheroes. But I just think that he is too smart to, to do something that stupid. Well, she also doesn't right? have the necessarily have the knowledge that that she she should or that she acts like she he has cares knowledge. about her so much even though yeah. he doesn't care about her he knows that she cares about him well she doesn't so know much. what he's been doing for the last 10 years she doesn't know that he's turned into a practice like a murder hobo psychopath that hates soups he's always not liked them but he's not she hasn't seen him on this 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 rampage and she's like well homelander said that you were on a bit of a war path she doesn't know the extent and i think that they were writing that dialogue and from a way, it's like she she did the forgetting that she doesn't have that knowledge about him, and so she's like assuming all of these things that are like wild for her to assume. Yeah, because she did have that line. It's like, well, you're just one bad day away from killing someone. Yeah, but so. she's right though, because she they is, showed she, in the bill in the Billy Short film, he fucking kills somebody, yeah. butchers. Well, but we she know that <laughs> she yeah. doesn't. Sure, but I just think it's a cheap way to kind of divide them and create some more conflict. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that didn't land right for me was the reveal. So they finally get. Get what they want. They get Compound V from this guy who's like uh, whoring his body out. Like, oh, the gecko. The gecko guy. Like, you could chop his body parts off and you can pay him. He's like, I'll let you chop my dick off for a thousand. And the guy's like, okay, where's an ATM? I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, a lot of weird. Anyways, things. that guy manages to steal some Compound V. Starlight reveals it, sends it to CNN or, or, or somewhere. And then it's NNC. revealed. <laughs> and then and, and see, and, and it doesn't really do much. Yeah, sure, their stock drops, but you like you think the government would but that's step in and shit like for that. You. They got all these lawyers and everything. Yeah, so. it they didn't hit the way way. I wanted. But then I guess the more I think about that's it, it's what like, it is. that's what would exactly. actually happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They are monsters. So. It's fucked up. But what are you gonna do? They have the money, they have the power. You they can't have the do money, the power, and yeah, their stock's going to drop, and a few things are going to drop, so I was like... They can so, recover. They'll rebound. So I guess I do like it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I like maybe that. Maybe not thing, but I kind of do like Yeah, the two things that I did like, and I'm intrigued, is for Homelander and Edgar. I want to see some more of that go yep. off, and uh, the cleansing of the seven. Yes. So yes. oh is, yeah, yeah. He's, he's talking he's talking about like replacing most of the people on the seven yeah he, he it, actually replaces A Train in this mm-hmm. we forgot to talk potentially, about potentially because the very next scene he talks about how A Train's on the team and yeah. they need the this diversity this is a no this is oh, a, another gone. subplot he's gone. it's another mm-hmm. subplot yeah. uh, with uh, A Train who knows uh, Starlight Secret and then they play this game of Cold War does he really know does he remember he does he's gonna tell on her and she's like. Wait a minute, you can't tell on me because then I'll tell on you. You killed your girlfriend and all this other thing. I'll go to Sports Illustrated. I was like, because all A Train cares about is kind of like the deep. He wants to be on the seven. He wants to be famous. Money, he wants yeah. to get money. Yeah, he's more about the money. Uh, you know, and um, and he gets replaced, or it looks like they're going to replace him. But then <laughs> oh, he goes gone. on a, a talk show and he's like, well, we got A Train. So I think A Train is the diversity pick because, you know, they say like 90% of your heroes or 80% of your heroes, something like that, or, or, or why. And it's like they're bringing that whole story. He's like, no, nah, there was this, this <laughs> and this. And so it's it kind of forces him to. Yeah, no one knows what he is. And yeah, no <laughs> then he outs uh, Queen Maeve, mm-hmm. uh, you know, sort of the Wonder Woman character as being a lesbian and kind of as a threat. It's so juicy. It's so sinister. He's such an evil asshole. Letting yes. her know. That's just that like, I'm looking, for, I'm looking forward to that. Fucking kill her at any time. And just the way, like, he pres- oh, he's just the best that character's evil so good. character. It reminds me of how fun it was uh, in Game of Thrones when Joffrey was at his height. Mm. That just somebody that you love to hate. But I think Homelander is even better than Joffrey because oh, he sure. has so much more dimensions to Taco him. And they, they, I love to hate him. I hope Homelander <laughs> lasts quite a bit. Now, he's never going to join the boys. He's never going to be a good character, but maybe they can manipulate him into working for him temporarily, uh, uh, You know, aligning their interests together temporarily before they need to take him down. Maybe so. for st- Stormfront. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. This is. I am still excited. Uh, is season two what we've seen so far as good as season one? No, not yet. But I think they're setting up things get there. that will deliver. The conflict between Homelander and Stormfront is a big one. Stormfront. The, the, they're Stormfront. setting up Kamiko <laughs> wanting to attack Stormfront. I'm like, no, please let Homelander deal with Stormfront. And you know, Kamiko is yeah. she gonna? Because Stormfront has now murdered Kamiko's brother. Uh, you know, so lots and lots of sub. Plants that need to pay off here. If they're popping out of my costume, my muscles are just too big. Jack, son. <laughs> jacked. Anyways, guys, thank y'all so much for watching. Put your thoughts down below on how the season's going so far. We got a new episode coming out on the Thursday or Friday. Um, 
And there's, I think there's only eight episodes, so we'll give We're halfway you, done already? We're halfway yep. done already. So we'll, maybe we'll do a midpoint after two more episodes and then a season overall. Or should we're we at a midpoint do, now. I know. We're we at are. There's four. So we could just <laughs> yeah. episodes. So we'll maybe just do one more video yeah, at the end of the series. Up. Series wrap up. All right, guys. Thank you all so much. Um, I didn't want to talk about spoilers, but honestly, the discussion has been kind of filled with spoilers. So I don't it really is. know what to do. You're not really watching this for non-spoilers, honestly. And nothing. Nothing, nothing has been in there that is such a huge surprise to anybody, so I think that most people... Okay, right. but I want to give a spoiler warning now because I know Stormfront's true identity, and you guys already know that she's a piece of shit, but I want to give you the context for her being a piece of shit. So, in the comics, she's a, a man, a male, and she he was a Nazi, and so he was on, like, the German side of Nazi, and then he kind of disappeared, and now he's reappearing, and he's like, you know... So I thought that they were going to go with that angle, the Nazi angle. I thought that was really interesting, like, she's... like she's always wearing these American flags. So she's like, kind of, it's like the juxtaposition mm. that she's un- turning the United States more fascist rather than, than democratic and, and freedom and stuff. But they kind of just turned into her, turned her into maybe a vanilla racist. You yeah. know, it's like, are they going to play on some of these Nazi things? Uh, but no, she's given a new identity, Liberty, where she's already always been in America, and all, but just doing fucked up shit on the side. Mm-hmm. So we'll have to see whether people believe, uh, you know, what she's doing on the side, which this is the one thing that I was like, what the fuck? And I wrote this down. How do people not fucking have cell phones in this world? So obviously these superpowers are going down, like buildings are exploding. You think that passerbys would like start filming the shit because it's fucking interesting and crazy looking. You know, everywhere she goes, people are like, whoa, because they love her, right? And you're telling me nobody has filmed her like fucking killing and murdering people while she's in battle? That's bullshit. Whatever they happened inside the building, so all those people who actually probably try to do something, they're dead. Ex- oh, so, you're right. All you see Heads out- exploding. Yeah, all you see outside is explosion shit. She's like, well, it's a terrorist. That's what yeah. it was. I so. just think that in this age of recording, yeah. that there would be something out For there. Sure. But There, there might would, be. Maybe. Yeah. But we'll they've just see. been excusing it with terrorists or loose, and the, it was the terrorists. Oh, fault, sorry, the, the super villains. So, yeah, super, super villains. Super villains. Sorry, villains. Not super sorry. Terrorists. We're sorry, saving Homeland. America, not the world. Super America. <laughs> <laughs> it's fascinating. All right, guys, thank y'all so much for watching, mm-hmm. and uh, we can't wait to see more. I want to thank Opera GX uh, for sponsoring the video. Check it out. There's really no reason not to. It's a browser, the first browser for gamers. Uh, it's got a lot of cool features. And if you're just too lazy to change your habits of closing all the tabs and windows, because I have like 40 (laughs) open and I need them all. I need them all. Uh, Then download Opera. Give it a chance. Check it out. You know, it's no cost to you. It's really cool. And um, they're offering a lot of cool features. So thank you uh, to them for sponsoring uh, this video, supporting the Angry Joe Show. And I hope you guys support them by downloading it. Uh, Use the link below uh, and, and check it out. All right, guys, thank y'all so much, and we will see you on the next Angry Joe show. Bye, Bye guys. guys. <clears throat> oh, you know what? Uh, here's one thing we forgot to do is give it a rating. <laughs> so let's go ahead and give about that. our season premiere, and we'll just say kind of the first half of the season, uh, a, a rating. And then at the end, we'll give it uh, you know an overall season rating. So for a premiere, how do you think that these first three episodes plus one? Plus ha- one. Ha- Everything stuff? for me so far is an eight. Mm-hmm. There are obviously some uh, things that we discuss every week, but eight yeah. out of ten Deep for me overall. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you, Alan? Yeah, I think I think it's fine. I think that if you take into account some of the believability, um, force conflict, and just like it's a minor things to tracking, but I still think it's super solid, and I think it has the ability from here to achieve you know nine. And I mean, if it'd have to finish really strong to get up to like yeah. ten, but yeah. like I, I I I want it to get there, and I think it has the potential to. But um, I still think I still almost think forgot. So <laughs> I'm putting this here at the end, um, and I think that. I really like the fact that they're restrained. Uh, you know, it doesn't feel like the show is cheap and they're not doing powers and battles because, you know, they don't have the budget for it because they are willing to do big battles and big mm-hmm. special effects. At one point, they show a fucking semi truck slamming into just a car for like, you know, 10, 15 seconds just to illustrate the point that Starlight has to be incognito when she's, you know, on this road trip and they're doing character building. I'm like, holy shit, that was a cool effect, you know? know what I mean but 
it's off on the side. And the fact that they would do stuff like that and spend money in that kind of way leads me to believe there is some epic fucking fights and battles it's coming. coming. We get a little bit of it with Stormfront there at the end, but I want a confrontation between supers now that there's interconflict within the seven mm-hmm. uh, instead of just the boys trying to find a way to spank the supers, right? All right, so my rating for it so far is, and I agree, it's an eight out of ten. So is that eight? Yep, all, all, all around, all right. eight. <laughs> and hopefully it will go up by the end of the season finale and, and the season two as a whole. Could go to nine like the last one, ten like the last one. We'll see. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And now, now. we will see you guys on the end Bye. on the next Angry <laughs> Joe Show. Bye, guys. Hey guys, so we're going to add this here at the end. Episode 5 uh, just released, so we want to add this because you know we're going to put this out on uh, Mon- or Tuesday. Uh, so the episode 5 was called We Gotta Go Now. Uh, from what do you remember, guys? What? How did you like this episode? This one was uh, pretty good. I was expecting a badass fight, and they're playing. They're making this terrible movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was oh, like, what yeah. are you doing? <laughs> yeah. So at the beginning, they're making a the movie. Uh, they basically have Queen Maeve, and Justice you know, League. they yeah. they do again. this. Yeah, they do the <laughs> Justice League, but they do this gay character thing, and yeah. they play that up because of uh, what Homelander said. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what did you think of the episode, Alex? Uh, it went in a direction that I wasn't quite expecting. Uh, <laughs> I still liked it, but it it was you know this was a little bit of a curveball. So yeah, so um, to kind of go through uh, some of the scenes here. Um, and, and what we think of it, like I said, you start off with the, the Queen Maeve, uh, and then A-Train has his basic, his scene in here. Um, oh, you got Butcher, who is, you know, continuing to, uh, f- you know, seems to sort of soften up and be nice. And this alerts the boys and makes them really wonder. But this guy, <laughs> this is obviously a stand-in for, say, the Marvel Universe. They're doing a little bit of DC. They're mm-hmm. doing a little bit of Marvel. That's the agent there. Um, you know, and A Train gives his terror. Uh, My favorite part of the whole oh, episode. Oh, I know, right? Uh, Black Noir is basically uh, getting ready to assault uh, the the boys, and that uh, that's where some of the action scene comes from. Uh, but I was saying, uh, A Train, uh, you know, notices that he's being written out. And he doesn't want to read his lines the way they tell him to read his lines. But ultimately, he does deliver it, and he delivers it in a meaningful way because it's real. He's mm-hmm. actually leaving the team. And so we've got a he subplot no here <laughs> of maybe A-Train being, you know, a wild card, going rogue, maybe joining the boys, maybe joining Queen May because in her storyline with her love interest, uh, you know, is under threat from Homelander, and they just don't want to do this anymore. They don't want to do this public thing. So it seems like Queen May and A-Train train can potentially maybe work together maybe help assist the boys well, i think everyone in the team yeah is against is getting it against everyone but black noir. because it yeah. does seem like uh, the boys need some help why oh, yeah. for sure. black noir shows up what happens there uh so black noir shows up to uh, uh billy's uh aunt's house yeah and uh he's there to you know kill him uh, and they so they set this you know they're they're they play he's home like alone. He's on the roof, like looking yeah. not very stealthy. No, I think no. they played it up for for, <laughs> for comedy. Yeah, uh, but you know they set a bunch of traps for him. Of course, none of it is very effective. We get to see uh, his bulldog again, which you know he's my favorite. Uh, he's the best of boys. Uh, yeah. and so I mean, ultimately they get to leverage the fact that um, Butcher knows about. Homelander has a son, and this is like really potentially damaging. The compound That's how he gets saved yeah. because you're like Black Noir attacks. He's like beating the fuck out of people, and then the boys realize, no, we're gonna help him. We're, you know, because always Butcher's like, no, I'm gonna do a last stand mm-hmm. here. I'm gonna kill myself and give you guys some time because like you cannot stop Black Noir. Nope. So the boys show up, and but they're ineffective. They don't do shit. Mm-hmm. But like I said, you you he makes this reveal that he knows about Homelander's son, which stops Black Noir in his tracks because it turns out that Black Noir is under control of Vought. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. What was it, the guy's name? Edgar. Um, yeah, Edgar. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, I was a little disappointed with that, that it seemed like, you know, Black Noir crying in the last episode when yeah, he found that out. Yeah, like I thought he was going to help the boys. Yeah, like exactly. That. You know, it's almost they kind of did a little uh, bait and switch there, and I didn't I didn't like that part. I felt thought that he needed to be affected more by this, but maybe that's going to play into who yeah, Black later. Noir is. Mm-hmm. He shows signs of, of weakness every once in a while, but he goes back into his normal mode. 
murder and mode. maybe murder mode <laughs> exactly <laughs> and we'll maybe we'll see a uh, deepening of that then we get uh, this little bit here again I, what is a pain he does a religious ad we have three more episodes we'll figure it out yeah I, I will this subplot go anywhere the, the he's now the face of the church and, and you know. I, I, honestly he's <laughs> not coming back to seven yeah, you, you don't think well, he's Maybe doing said. all this uh, no. to come back to the seven and Maybe uh, he's gonna use him just like I right, I could try to help you, but Oh you you have to help me against Homelander. I mean, so they're 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 pretty much rallying the forces it, against yeah, Homelander, but exactly. Homelander <laughs> gets uh kind of an unexpected ally here as well. Yeah, let me before then <sighs> though, Homelander, I this wanted, is the best scene I in the whole thing. This to be, I wanted it to be it real. You saw this in the promo. But this is the best fucking thing. He gets he gets so angry uh, that he essentially just lasers the fuck out of everybody. I gotta show you it. Oh, it's. I was like, yes, this is amazing. holy fucking shit. The fucking re- like just unleashing and it's like you feel like Homelander is unstable he's falling yeah. apart mm-hmm. and this is probably what would happen in that situation because sure. he's he has this tendency for violence when he gets backed up into a corner unfortunately it is it's another, a dream sequence. it is another bait and no. switch uh, where he's just you know he goes and he's like just sort of confused with himself and he doesn't you know he's like trying to hold it together to hold it together he flies off but whereas i didn't really like the the flip in the black noir uh thing where he's crying and then he moves on this one i actually thought about it a while i thought it was a bait and switch number one i was like i'm glad they did it because i got to see it you know so at least i'll give them credit for showing it right because like that's what would happen if superman fucking lost his shit and fucking murdered everybody yeah. that's why batman is so scared and does a batman with Superman. But anyways, uh, <laughs> but no, I actually think him this, up, deepens, the way. <laughs> this deepens his character, the Homelander, because that is what he would have done if he's the Homelander that we know. And the way he's been written this whole time, he would have done that. And they showed what he would have done. But he's trying his best to hold it together that maybe he's not this, you know, there's some part of Homelander that, that is complex. And he's, he's like trying his best uh, to hold it together. Yeah, Where this is going to go, how they can exploit mm-hmm. that. We don't know. Yeah, because he was freaking out whenever he lost nine points. He's like, how many points am I down? He's like, nine. Yeah. Nine points. He's like, I got to fix this. I got to fix this. So mm-hmm. he's like, all right. I, I'm, they're like, hey, you need to get step back and let the press deal with it. It's like, no, nah, I got this. I got yeah. this. Big mistake. <laughs> so then uh, it's revealed Starlight, uh, you know, Stormfront knows that Starlight uh, was the one that leaked the information mm-hmm. to uh, the press. And then Homelander comes and confronts Stormfront, basically uh, wanting to get her help. He gets her help, and it actually does help him. Uh, you know, and but it is revealed. This is the big one right this here. This is not the fight this I was looking for, guys. Not <laughs> the fight that I wanted. Not the fight that I was looking for. She's like, you know, laser me, you pussy. <laughs> and they start to basically have laser superhero me. sex. I didn't realize that uh, this is something that, you know, they would d- go and actually depict and show. Mm-hmm. But I, because I want Homefront to, have, I want you know him to kill Stormfront rather, Homelander to kill Stormfront. Yeah, we fucked up because there, there was tension there, but we misread it. It was sexual, sexual tension. tension. Yeah, it was, was sexual, was sexual <laughs> tension. So now this makes the series even more deadly. You have two of the the most powerful two superheroes, two psychopath superheroes, one racist and one just unstable psychopath that wants to be adored. Uh, you know. Against us and now allied to a certain extent, because uh, you know. So I guess she's the only one that can handle his power, and and she's helping him. But you gotta wonder, Stormfront playing him. Oh here, yeah, for you sure. You know, she's and she's taking mm-hmm. advantage of him. She's uh, fully has him in her hands. Now, what happened last time? Somebody manipulated Homefront or Homelander. Okay, that could it could still result in Homelander realizing that he's just being taken advantage of and we get what we want, seeing him brutally just like take her out. Or are the boys like just super fucked and they're going to have to no. you know fight they both of them or something? The, the superheroes. 
They just uh, no, we're we're see. See. just lose at the I end. Do, nope, I do. They, they win. <laughs> yeah, I, I I do wonder where this is going. So uh, this is episode five. We wanted to add this here at the end, and we thought this episode was great and interesting. Uh, twists nice in ways, <laughs> two nice big twists, killing the crowd, but it not really being, and then them getting together, and it's like shit. How do they handle this? So for me, this episode is very much up there, and we have three more episodes left, and we will oh, make no. one more video <laughs> doing the. <laughs> A finale review on the last three episodes and give you a score overall. All right. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, this basically doesn't affect our scores. I think our scores are oh, about, no, about the same, yeah, uh, about a, in the eights range. And we'll see if this series can raise it to that nine ten or uh, maybe drop it. We'll see. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next Angry Joe show. Bye, Thank guys. You.